The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. for one more, and this is the number 100. Um, where I put uh, chi yeah. Chip? That's it. There he is. They like Carlos handle board, <laughs> and we're in another country. Where are we? Uh, I Listen, found you. I uh, found you. Welcome. This is uh, Spindle City Straight Talks, 100th show of the year. I'm Chip. And I'm CJ, calling from the morgue. Oh, can you get a close-up? Oh, you can't, huh? This is a picture I drew of CJ in a hospital. I can box. see it. I can see it. I know, but I think it's there's too much light here for see. Okay. All right, let's get down to business. Uh, tomorrow's the big day. Tomorrow, tomorrow's the day for Fall River, tomorrow that's is for the sure. Big, tomorrow is the big day, and, you know, as, as we're always, you're always digging, uh, we, have, we had an anonymous tip that we've confirmed, and that is that Sam Sutter found his office. <laughs> uh, and, and in our research to try to corroborate that story, we found it to be a fact because here we have a picture of Sam Sutter in the mayor's office. Because you can tell by the window. That's one of the new that's one of the 22 windows. So You mean the kind we don't know where they came from? Anybody who says that Sam doesn't know where his office is is now incorrect. He has found his office and we're the first one to break that news. <laughs> I'm telling you, Chip, this, is, this has become the, the most obnoxious election season that I've seen. And you, you called it right at the beginning. It. You said this is going to be a very interesting time and a very interesting election. I'll tell you that uh, I, you know, I, I posted the weekend flush last night, and uh, oddly enough, it didn't generate as much uh, hate as I thought it was going to. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. And our colleague right there at Bristol Community College, um, Mr. Rebello, Rick Rebello, who is a uh, communications instructor, he put a small uh, statement out there on how four of our voters run on their gut, uh, which we know is true. Uh, you know, everything here is very emotional and, and very guttural in, uh, in Fall River. And, um, of course, the uh, tribe of uh, haters and malcontents decided to come out of the clouds and get behind their keyboards with their hot pockets. <laughs> well, but, you, you know, you know, I, number one, are you, are you being released today or how are you feeling? Um, actually, I have no idea. Um, the, uh, for those of our viewers who aren't aware, um, I'm currently in uh, Charlton Memorial Hospital, not my first choice of places to be, um, with, uh, I'm septic. I developed a pretty uh, severe uh, infection and uh, don't know where it came from. Everyone tried to blame this and that and the other thing. And the doctor was here yesterday and very clearly said, I have no idea. Uh, I did make a phone call to uh, my surgeon and to uh, a couple of colleagues of mine in Boston, and they are en route to review the records and decide if they're going to keep me here, shoot me to Boston, or uh, just put me out of my misery. Uh, I, I understand that the votes are coming in right now uh, three to one on survival for me. <laughs> Assassination is the number one choice for the day. <laughs> well, you're, the toxic, you're, you're now the toxic Avenger. That's but, it. <laughs> tom look, tomorrow is a big, big day. Uh, yes, it is. Know, it is a huge day, and I'm going to I'm going to say this, that I want everybody to come out and vote. Whether you support, whether you support people that, that uh, we support or personally is irrelevant. What we want is a large turnout so we can truly say that the people have spoken. We may not be happy with what they say, just as you're not happy with some of the things we say on this show. But you can't complain uh, when the majority of people are running the government. When the minority of people are running the government, well, 
it's your it's it's our fault i'm not going to just blame you i mean i vote in every well, i don't vote in every election because sometimes i do not vote in in partisan primary elections uh unless i have a can uh, one specific candidate that i really want to see get in uh i am an independent voter i am uh i always have been uh, and I will occasionally vote in, in Republican primaries or Democratic primaries, uh, Democrat primaries. So, but the, the key is to vote. We want you all to vote. And look, you know, you know that, that's amazing that you say they vote on their gut. You can't vote on your gut, you know. You don't go to your auto mechanic uh, on, based on your gut. You've got to have, you've got to believe that he can fix your car. You've got to research the fact that the guy's a decent mechanic and he can fix your car. You don't go to have your, you don't go to have your, you know, your, your refrigerator fixed by a guy that can't fix the refrigerator because your gut tells you that he looks like a good guy. You got to do your research. We have a lot of people running. And I'll tell you something, a lot of the new people are not, are not going to get in because people don't listen. And I, but I hope they're not discouraged. We had a lot of new candidates that had a lot of good things to say. We had some candidates that had nothing but, but BS to throw. But the reality is that uh, some of these people said a lot of good things. They had a lot of good ideas and they were independent. And we have to get rid of this idea that the city council is some kind of entertainment venue and it doesn't really matter in our government because we seem to think that well, guess what? Uh, the, if we replace the mayor, everything's fixed. Well, that's not true, because if we get the wrong mayor, and you know, our choices sometimes are not infallible. We pick people that we think can do the job, and then when they get in office, they don't do the job. But we have some city councilors who historically attach themselves to whoever's in there and are rubber stamps, and we can't have that. We can't and have that. I mean, we've got to break this cycle and, and stop making a city council a popularity contest. But, you know, Chip, this is what it's been for years. You know, it's always been a, a, a popularity contest. You know, I got to vote for, for Linda or I got to vote for Leo or I got to vote for, for, you know, Ray Mitchell or, or whoever it may be because, you know, they're nice, they're friends, they fixed my pothole. You know what? You can pick up the phone and call Ken Pacheco's office or DCM and say, hey, I got a pothole, I want it filled. You don't have to get a city councilor to do it, all right? And for you to think that you are so weak and so inept that you can't pick up the phone and dial seven digits or ten digits, okay, that doesn't say much for you. You have to understand these people have 20-plus years' experience on the city council, and so far we're worse off than when they came into office. You're right. And when you, and when you look at it, you, you have to say, you know, what are you talking about? I've seen all weekend, because I've had nothing better to do than to lay in a hospital bed and, and look at a screen, how they're saying, well, you know, you can't replace the entire council because you need experience, because uh, how are people going to do it? Well, how does any mayor who becomes mayor know how to do it? How does any city councilor who comes city council for the first time know how to do it? Okay, it's called common sense, something which has been greatly lacking in Fall River well, for decades. Yeah, you know, I mean, they, they talk about it, you know, and you, you talk about knowing how to do it. They don't have to know how to do anything. The only thing they have to really know how to do is listen to the people, because that's what they're there to represent. It's not, it, they're not there to do what they want to do. They're there to do what the people want them to do, because they are representatives of the people. This is a republic and it is a representative form of government and you know something they don't do their job they know what they say they know what they're doing uh, but listen before that I had an idea and uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to CJ about it but I'll tell you what let's have a contest we're gonna have a contest we saw the Herald News endorsements and they endorsed one and a half incumbents uh, the one and a half. <laughs> one and a half. I got a half because I gave Steve Long a half, not a full, because he really wasn't elected. So he is sitting in a chair, so he has to be, I'll call him a pseudo or semi-incumbent. So it's one and a half incumbents. They endorsed a lot of new people. Uh, so let's, why don't you email us and make your picks. 
before the election. Don't email them in after the election. And the one who gets the, who, who has the highest percentage of, of accuracy um, can get a, can come after some show and have lunch on us. And uh, let's see how, let's see what kind of prognosticators you can be, because I, I think it's interesting. We'll, we'll see how you stack up against the, against the Herald News. And, but now th that segues in, into something I wanted to talk about, about the city council and about politicians well, Chip, in general. Before you, before you segue into that, I want to remind people that an elected official is not to have an opinion. Yes, that's right. They are not to have an opinion, okay? Article 5 of our Constitution clearly states that their job is what we tell them it is because all power residing originally in the people and being derived from them, the several magistrates and officers of government vested with authority, whether legislative, executive, or judicial, are their substitutes and agents and are at all times accountable to them. Yes. And them means us. Yes, part one, artic Article 5, I know that very well. It's, it's, I think it's hanging over my bed, but, uh, but the fact is they don't, they don't believe that. Uh, That's right, it, they don't. What they've done is brainwash the people, because if you ask, if you say that to them, they'll say, oh, once we get elected, we have to do what we think is right. No, you no. don't. You're supposed to do what the people want, and if you're not sure what the people want, ask them. There are, you know, there have been governors who have overridden the pub, you know, the entire state's opinion. Many, many years ago, they had a referendum on capital punishment, and it passed. The state of Massachusetts voted in favor of capital punishment, but the then governor Dukakis vetoed it because he had a personal. Uh, he 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 objected to the death penalty, which he has every right to do. Uh, but. As an agent of the people, as the supreme agent of the people in Massachusetts, there, was, there is no one who should be more bound by its constitution than the governor of this commonwealth. So again, we see what politicians do. And this is another thing politicians do. They sling, here we go, the infamous solid waste task force report. And I know there's like 27 new versions, CJ. <laughs> yeah, they're up to version 11 last up to a ver and, and last week, on Friday, they were up to 7. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, the viewers, to listen to this, to see how effective and how efficient these task forces are. I've said they're nothing more than, than political, uh, you know, political arms of the, of the government to, to justify their positions. Okay, this is from 7. And I haven't seen if this still is an 11, but I'm sure it is. And it talks about, this is about uh, contracts impacting solid municipal waste. And this is A, subsection A, recycling service agreements. And it says, the recycling agreement between the city and Casella Recycling LLC entered into on November 1st, 2014 with two-year with two term. Uh, with a two-year terminates on October 31st, 2016, Section 4 of the contract explicitly states that upon completion of the initial term, the time period shall automatically extend for an additional one year unless either party, no less than 30 days prior to the end of the existing agreement, provides notice to the other party of its intent not to extend for that additional one year. Then at the end of this next two bullshit, things. It says the existence of the provision is identified as a limiting factor in soliciting bids for future process of vendors. Really? And there's a lawyer, at least one lawyer on this board. And you're telling you actually had the audacity to put down that that limits your ability for future bids. It says that this contract terminates in 2016. As long as you give them 30 days notice, you're not competent enough to end this contract when you have the ability in writing to end this contract and then open it up to all vendors, 
to save the city of Fall Rivers taxpayers money. This is, this is only part of the ridiculousness of this document and the people who put it together because they're nothing more than shills for the mayor. And every time we have a task force or a study group, or a, you know, it's always about let's get a bunch of people to agree with me. And you know something? It's just like when you get a study. If you pay for a study, that study is going to say what you want it to say, because if it doesn't, they don't get paid. Hey, I, I want to see an independent. Look, this is ridiculous. I mean, Jesus, you don't have to be a lawyer to read this. If you sign a contract with a martial arts studio, and I know a few people who own these things, and they take the you money think? out of, they take the money they take the money out of your, your checking account or, or, or uh, credit card monthly and the contract says it can be terminated by either party with 90 days notice and you have to pay for an additional 90 days or something to that effect so that's like me saying well if I don't like the place I can't get out of it well you're gonna pay a penalty because it says you still got to, you know, you got to give them 90 days and you got to pay for that 90 days. But you can get out of the contract if you really want to. As a matter of fact, I've helped people word their letters and stuff to get out of contracts with certain, certain vendors that they, they weren't satisfied with what the, you know, with, the, with the product they were getting. There's not even a penalty here. There's not even a penalty. It just says all you've got to do to terminate that contract is a f inform them 30 days before it expires to completely obliterate and negate the ex automatic extension clause. And then they write, it's a limiting factor for getting other bids. Oh, they kill me. I'm telling you, they're killing me. Hey, Chip, you don't seem to understand. They expect that the nitwits the idiots, the obtuse in Fall River will not even attempt to read it because they want everything fed to them like pablum. They don't want to investigate. They don't want to read. And then the elected officials, the task force officials, want to be sure that you are not informed. Because one of the things that that report clearly showed, and I actually have copies on the server of emails that went back and forth between several members of this commission, this, this task force, where the city council was thrown under the bus, all nine of them, for their failure to act, for their failure to do their job. And they had to remove that. And in one of the, the, the emails, it clearly states, you can't do this because you're throwing people under the bus. You're a, a attaching blame to people and we have to make this a non-political issue we have to make this a non-political report this is trash this is the most political thing in fall river right now and they're trying to turn around and say that this is not a political issue well what they're where, trying where to are say heads buried? <laughs> what they're trying to say is the only the only people you can't use for a wheel chalk under the bus are people that are friendly to them. Yeah, uh, you know. And they don't want to upset the councilors because it's an election cycle. So right. what, this, what this is, is a, look, you don't have to throw anybody under the bus. That's not the point. But if somebody should be thrown under the bus, it's not throwing them under the bus. It's accepting the consequences of an improper action. If you don't do something right, you got to be, you got to say, look, I screwed up. I'm sorry. That's, you know, nobody is perfect. No, that's why they put erasers on pencils. Uh, you know, the fact is that if you, if, if you do something wrong, you've got to accept the consequences. And so it's not throwing some. That's another euphemism that they use to make it, oh, it's objectionable. Oh, don't, don't, don't. Uh, you're negative if you say somebody stuck 22 windows in and there's no accountability. That's being negative. No, it's not. It's being an efficient government. It's looking for the root, the cause, and eliminating the cause. Whether it's firing a person who shows gross incompetence, 
or whether it's giving them the proper training, which is their, their response, even though 22 windows was gross incompetence, and people not only should be fired, a few of them should go to jail, but that's, that's my opinion. But the fact is, this is all crap. What this is, they're going to march all these, all these shills up in front of the microphone and tell you how hard they worked on a report. What they did was, they worked hard on how to try to figure out how to write 20 pages and say absolutely nothing. And, get, and getting data that proves absolutely nothing, like well, I said. Well, a, a it, it's group just, press look, conference, it's just which, a, by the way, a group press conference, which, by the way, um, Spindle City Straight Talk has not been invited to, uh, is being held later on today with the Herald News WSAR uh, to answer the allegations of, uh, you know, multiple editing of the report and why it's not released yet. And, uh, you know, the thing is, is that we don't care because we already know why. We have it. All right. Well, so we've they're got all, gonna yeah, you're right, CJ. We've got all the copies. So right. they, they can say that they didn't, these were just works. You know, they were, it was a work in progress, and technically it's, it's not finished till it's finished. But then then we, we're dealing in semantics. If this is just a draft, I don't see draft anywhere on this document. I, why would you put a cover page on a draft? And it's the same cover page on every draft. <laughs> I'm sorry. Again, you need hip boots to wade through it. Right. And you the know. thing is, is that suck it up, accept the responsibility where it's supposed to be. This is the day before the election. In my opinion, I would have a great deal more confidence in any city councilor or any person involved in this entire waste debacle would step forward and say, we screwed up. We made a mistake. Okay? Instead, what do I get from, the, the, from members of the city council? I get pablum. Well, sometimes you just have to vote for it because you have no choice. You always have a choice. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, the challenge is going out to all you viewers. Let's go. I want you to pick it. I want you to pick the mayor's race, the city council race, and the school committee race. I want, you, I want to see who, who is the... the the perfect prognosticator. I want to see. I want to. I want to see. I want to see who is Karnak the magnificent. <laughs> and you know, and and uh, it's going to be a very interesting race. I told you know, um, you know, I told a friend of mine that look, uh, I don't. You know, obviously, I would like. There are certain candidates I would like to see uh, get in, get in office, but the reality is that. What I would rather see is a turnout, a big turnout. I want to see the people of Fall River choose their government. And whether I agree or disagree with that government is irrelevant to a degree. I can complain, I can point out, and I can say I told you so if the, if the people who get elected don't do their job. But if they do their job, they'll get the credit that they do and say they, they, they made a good vote or they, had, they ended up becoming uh, a lot better than we thought. But the key is that just like in a union hall, just like the majority rules, you don't always get your way. But unless you participate, the majority does not control the government. And CJ talked about, the, about our state a commonwealth constitution that says they are at all times answerable to us and accountable to us. But the problem is they are not answerable or accountable to us if we don't make them so. Because they're going to use every kind of trick in the world to make themselves into the government and make themselves into pseudo-monarchs and go up there and say, like they always do, well, you know, I've got to vote. I've got to do what I think is right. Well, look, in, in, on innocuous cases, that may be okay with the general public. But if there's an issue that impacts the people of this area on any level, you should inform your congressmen, your state reps or state senators, your city councilors, your school committeemen, or your mayor about your position. Because the excuse they use is, I never got a call on that bill. 
I never got a, nobody ever said anything to me about how they felt. And that's their justification. Take that away from them by being a voter. Take that away from them by getting involved. Let, you, their phone, let their phone ring off the hook. Can you imagine, Chip, if we had 70% of the registered voters show up at the polls? They would be, I mean, they would need depends because they wouldn't be able to believe it. And they're so thrilled when 16% come out and vote, 22% come out and vote. I would, I would hide that number. I would be ashamed. Okay, I would like to see 99.9% of the voters come out and vote. Okay, I'm in the hospital right now. I already voted. Okay, so there's no excuse. There's none. Nobody has an excuse. How about when you're on primary day when you were walking and you bumped into a gentleman who hadn't voted yet and you sent him to the polls? Yeah, and, it, and his excuse was I was out of town. And I went, well, you, you're back in town, <laughs> you know, and the bowls are still open. Well, that's that, right. That's not an See, this is what we get. But we'll go back to a time uh, during, you know, during the, the Viveris administration, we had 70% turnouts. And if you look at this, this is what says it all. I'm glad you brought up that point, CJ. That was a great point. Because in those days, people worried about, taxing the people to death because they'd get booted out of office because 70, 65, 70% of the people would go to the polls. Most of those people have moved out of the city and this city has begun to, it has begun. It's, it's, it's been completely destroyed now. It's a shell of its former self and you can track that with the reduction in voter participation. The politicians were petrified of the voters in this city when we had 65, 70% of the people who owned property. And if you had the audacity to pass a trash pickup fee, you would have been out of office so fast, your head would have exploded. The fact is that in the old days, politicians always looked at increasing the burden on the taxpayer as the last resort not the first option. And when we, look at, when, when we look at the destruction of Fall River, it is directly proportional to voter turnout. But they, you know, they, they always use the excuse, well, my vote doesn't matter. Let me tell you something. Let's look at Alan Sylvia's race, 26 votes. I guess that vote that didn't matter mattered that day. You know, yeah, every he, vote mattered. And even in the old days when we had a huge... I comparison voter participation. The first time Carlton Viveros was elected to office, it was an extremely small margin. And we had 65 or 70 percent of the people in the city voting. And the vote, the vote total was still under 500 votes, I think. Right. And, and it, know, so it, if you think, you know, you vote only, you, you, you don't say your vote doesn't count. A vote always counts, because at least you can say, I weighed in. Because if you want to say, you know, the only, the, the way to make the politicians believe you don't count is think your vote doesn't count. And that's sad. That is truly sad. That is true. But remember, the man can find his office now. I got the proof. <laughs> there it is. Hey, and maybe, you know, maybe he'll stop listening to the, the voters or whoever is mayor after tomorrow. We'll, well stop on Wednesday's show, hopefully you'll be back and, uh, and we will be talking. We will have our post-election. Stay angry, stay involved, get out and vote. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching Spindle City Straight Talk. And you get well. Get well, CJ. Thanks a lot. Have a great day, everybody.